Hi, welcome to Friday's program, last program of the week, and thanks for joining us on TNT, our daily or week daily whip around of the main stories out of Thailand and the region. Uh, We've got quite a lot of varied things in today's program. Now, tomorrow we will be doing our usual live show at, um, that'll be at 9 a.m., Thai time, Saturday, just before I get these little stitches taken out of my head, so I should uh, look less like Frankenstein next week. Now, just two quick things I wanted to mention before we move on. In relation to the acclaimed number by the Transport Minister in a Thai PBS article yesterday, claiming that there were 3.1 million tourists coming through the turnstiles during October. It sort of follows some photos that have uh, found their way onto the internet of some huge crowds waiting to get through immigration in the last week of October. Uh, Interestingly, mostly men. It was a rather strange observation. But uh, moving on from that, one thing I neglected to mention yesterday when I was calling out those numbers saying I found them difficult to believe because if you take the 3.1 million tourists for October and put that right across the year, that would almost be up to the numbers of tourists that were coming here back in 2019. But as some one of our commenters uh, mentioned, that doesn't include any Chinese or Russian tourists or visitors. So that number it seems to me to be wildly exaggerated or some calculation mistake, uh, as much as we would like it to be true. That was one thing. The other thing uh, somebody mentioned the other day, uh, we were talking about the long-term residence visa, and I mentioned that you had to pay 50,000 baht upfront to apply for that visa. That's in fact untrue. You you pay 50,000 if they accept you uh, for application for the visa. So you fill in all the paperwork online and if they say, yep, that's all all okay, we can go ahead, then you pay your 50,000 baht. So thank you to, I think there were two people who pointed out my mistake on that one. Anyway, uh, to uh, other news and well, I said to report that the sky is falling in. From ThaiNewsroom.com, Chinese space junk falling to Earth on November the 5th, that's tomorrow, Uh, 11 provinces at risk. Well, that was a big concern to me. I thought, I wonder if it's going to be falling on me. Uh, Luckily, no, it looks like uh, I will be exempt. It looks like uh, there I am down there in Phuket, and that's the passage there of the, uh, the rocket. Uh, and it's going to be, if it is going to be falling at all, I mean, it'll probably burn up when it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere, but if it does fall anywhere on Thailand, uh, it will be falling on the north and northeast regions. Looks like Cambodia and uh, Vietnam may also be in the path of this uh, rocket crashing, but let's go to the actual facts. The Thai Space Agency warned that a 21.6-tonne chunk of China's Long March 5B Y4 rocket is on track to fall back to Earth tomorrow, with 11 provinces at risk. Second paragraph, China successfully launched the third and final piece of its new Tiangong space station on Monday, and the rocket's 21.6-tonne body is now coming back down somewhere on Earth. And a few quotes there up the top. It's clear that China is failing to meet its responsible standards regarding their space debris. It makes the Chinese rocket designers look lazy that they didn't address this. This from the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. And I note that uh, the only piece of space junk I can remember falling to Earth was back in 1979 when part of Skylab, I think the big, one of the early NASA sort of space stations around the, orbiting around the Earth, uh, fell to Earth and it crashed in parts of Australia. I think uh, people still selling bits of Skylab online uh, and making some money out of that. So there it is, 27.6 metres tall. That's the Long March rocket. Apparently, it's the sort of the middle section of that that's going to be falling back to Earth, perhaps tomorrow, and perhaps um, somewhere over 11 provinces in Thailand. But uh, as they say, it's much more likely to be burning up as it re-enters the atmosphere. To our next story, and a Child Protection Foundation chief has surrendered over alleged abuse and forced labour. 
A Child Protection Foundation chief surrendered to face charges of alleged physical abuse against children at his foundation in Samut Songkram, that's just southwest of Bangkok, and forcing them to work as cheap labour at his resort. Down the bottom there, late last month, the foundation, which takes care of 55 abandoned children, made headlines after a group of university students carrying out voluntary work there covertly took a video clip of two teachers beating seven or eight children aged between 10 and 17. This is a really bad look. Let's look into some more details. A smiling Montreux, this is the owner of the foundation, did not express any worry when he uh, arrived at the police station. Uh, police also charged two teachers who were seen in the clip beating the children. The foundation was formed back in 1994. Their Facebook page hasn't been updated since 2015. Apparently, as it says down the bottom there, several well-known figures visiting the foundation have donated money and necessities in the past. Up the top, Zendai, these are the people who uh, posted the clip of the, uh, of the alleged beatings, claimed the children were forced to clean the resort in the morning before school in exchange for 40 baht for buying sweets. And down the bottom there, Zendai said three kids had fled the foundation, telling friends they would rather seek jobs at construction sites in Bangkok. Their fate uh, has not been known since. So I think we might hear more about that particular story. Uh, a bad look, though, when a child protection foundation is alleged to be abusing the children in its care. Uh, thanks, by the way, to Five Star Marine. They can take you out on a private tour to one of the many pretty little island and beach spots around Phuket, and you're watching TNT. This is the TNT program, last program of the week. What are you doing for the weekend? Well, after the 9 a.m. Thai time live program tomorrow, I'll be heading out to Seeds of Change on Koh Saray. And uh, a little story that I think will tickle your fancy and uh, a little charity that we're going to be running in partnership with TNT. We'll tell you more about that on Monday. To our next story and the former Pakistan PM Imran Khan shot and wounded in a clear assassination attempt. According to the media there, former Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan was shot in the shin on uh, yesterday when his anti-government protest convoy came under attack in the east of the country. His aides claim it was a clear assassination attempt down the bottom there. A suspect has been arrested. So uh, an assassination attempt on the former Prime Minister of Pakistan. A bit closer to home, Grab Thailand to review new rules, expect solution within two weeks. This story from Thai PBS World. And we just sort of should underline <clears throat> the profound change that's happened to the, uh, the food and beverage and restaurant industry in Thailand over the past two or three years. Certainly accelerated by what happened with the, uh, the lockdowns and uh, lack of access to getting out and about during COVID-19. But the whole delivery system in uh, Thailand has become a huge industry. And one of the players is Grab, Grab Bike, Grab Taxi. And they've just introduced some new rules. Uh, one of those rules is about zoning, saying that drivers have to stay within a particular zone and the riders aren't happy. Grab Thailand, an on-demand delivery service provider, says that they expect to resolve the current conflict with Grab Food and Grab Mart riders within 14 days after hundreds of them protested in Bangkok yesterday. In a statement issued late yesterday, the company said it had always attached importance to the opinions of its partner, riders and customers. Well, I would have thought without the riders and customers, there was no business. Now, down the bottom, you'll absolutely love this. There are a couple of little uh, sort of space bar mistakes. I'll go through them because I want to read this sentence to you in whole. The company says it will hold meetings with representatives of its drivers to promote mutual understanding and develop ways to handle certain issues of mutual interest for the optimum benefit of the drivers, customers and partner shops. Well, that, my friends, is one of the worst examples you'll ever see of a PR word salad. What a load of rubbish. 
and uh, think that in these modern times, a company, a professional company, can get away with a media release like that. Three lines saying absolutely nothing. And uh, the next page says, regarding riders' earnings and allocation of work as raised by the protesters, the company said that it's fully aware of the issues and maintains that any changes of rules will have a minimum impact on the riders. And there they are, quite a big meeting held in Bangkok yesterday. Uh, I actually use, not so much Grab, I use Food Panda quite a lot. Probably, I don't know, three or four times a week, I enjoy getting a delivery of food. Got a great selection of restaurants around where I live, and it's delivered hot and fresh. And it doesn't seem to be any more expensive than I would have paid if I'd taken the time to get on my motorbike or in my car and actually driven to the restaurant myself. So uh, these have been a big change to the way that we, we do eat. Well, it certainly has in our household. To our next story, this one from the Bangkok Post. This is more on the crackdowns on uh, illegal foreign ownership of, uh, of businesses, things like bars and nightlife in particular. And the story says, police have arrested 15 Chinese and Thai citizens over their suspected links to a string of illegal businesses and phone scam rings. And they've seized assets of 42 million baht. Uh, let's see, the first raid was on a house and they arrested five Chinese and three Thais. They seized three cars, two motorbikes, 58 bottles of foreign liquor, and then 13 mobile phones, three notebooks, and seven million baht in cash. Then they went to another house where Mr. Lin's father and two Thais were arrested. Many items, including three cars, luxury wristwatch, passbook, suspicious ID cards and passports, 7 million baht in cash. And then they apprehended four Chinese nationals and seized eight brand name bags, cigars, playing cards. So I think we're seeing a major crackdown on these uh, illegally owned foreign businesses. So uh, <laughs> make sure your paperwork's up to date. And just noting police are expanding the investigation to see if there are other state officials, politicians and senior police involved. So if you do own a foreign business, just make sure your paperwork is up to date. To our next story, also from the Bangkok Post, teen vaping crisis drives public unease. And let's go to the issue here. And uh, it says there's been a spike in the number of teenagers who vape. According to a survey on Thai people's health conducted in 2019 and 20, 5.3% of children aged 10 to 19 have tried vaping. 2.9% do so regularly. Around 30% of people in this age bracket who smoked e-cigarettes are women. I just should note that vaping is still illegal in Thailand, although I see a lot of people vaping. A lot of my friends vape uh, at a previous place of employment. A lot of people vaped annoyingly in the office. I don't find uh, the smell of the vaping particularly pleasant. Uh, they say more needs to be done to raise awareness on the harmful effects of vaping, which can negatively impact the brain, heart and lungs and cause cancer. He also cautioned that smoking can serve as a gateway to more harmful drugs. I'm not sure if there's evidence to prove that, but it's a claim this report has made. With vapes being illegal in Thailand, many are designed to resemble pieces of stationery, so they go unnoticed at schools. Pretty hard not to notice the uh, plume of smoke emanating out of the child's nostrils. And uh, teachers and parents must educate children on the risks uh, tied to smoking e-cigarettes. Well, I think education is always the key. It doesn't really help much, though, when the parents and uh, some of the teachers are smoking and puffing away <laughs> during their breaks. To our next story from Thai residents. Uh, this one's been written by, I suspect, somebody who doesn't have English as their first language, so bear with me as we go through this. Teachers protect children from a school knife attack. Just halfway through that first paragraph, Ming Salah, 30, attacked his 45-year-old mother with a wooden weapon. He then returned afterwards and burned down his home on the 2nd of November. Villagers notified police that he was on the way to his four-year-old son at a development center. Now this is up uh, in the Buriram area, district of Buriram, which is in the northeast of Thailand. Teachers inside the center were notified and started preparing for his arrival. Now, 
you would know exactly what was on their mind when they were warned about this. Their worst fear, of course, is another case similar to the sad case in Nongbua Lampu. The children were all moved to the second floor and the doors were locked. A Ming really did come to the school and they've got photographic evidence you can see in the picture there. Security camera shows him arriving. The best they could do was keep the doors locked from outsiders, a protection method intended to keep the children safe. So in the wake of the massacre at Nongbua Lampu a few weeks ago, a lot of teachers now have a heightened awareness and schools uh, have made preparations to make sure that these sort of incidents don't happen again. And let's hope that's the case. So well done to those teachers for acting early. And with that, I thank you very much for watching today. Thank you very much to our sponsor, Five Star Marine. And I appreciate you for dropping in and checking out the news. Uh, please click the subscribe button if you get a, a chance on your way out. We might see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Thai time for our live program. Otherwise, have a fantastic weekend. We'll see you on Monday.